in first graders. Okay, so today again, we're talking about central idea. I know it's been a while. Um, so remember, we every story has a topic, the person or the thing that the story is about. And then we have the central idea, the most important thing about that topic, the most important idea or the most important point that it makes about the topic. And remember, it's always going to have that supporting evidence. So it's going to have details. It's going to have facts. It's going to give you examples that tell you about the central idea. So we're going to read a story today called, Do You Really Want to Visit a Wetland? So as we read this, I want you to think, hmm, what is my central idea? So to find the central idea, you have to find the topic and then get a little bit deeper. What is it? What's the most important thing about that topic? All right. A visit to a wetland would help you ace your school report. Do you really want to go? It will be very wet. But wetlands are also full of interesting animals. And only some of them will want to eat you. Be, be prepared for water everywhere. You'll need hip waders. And don't bring a regular boat. You'll need an airboat with a big propeller above water so it doesn't get stuck in the mud. Don't forget the bug spray and sunscreen. Ready? Now you're off to explore the swamps, marshes, and sloughs of the Florida Everglades. Start at the Shark River Slough. Say slew. Say slew. It looks like a big still marsh. But the water moves through here like a slow river. Don't worry, the bull sharks that the slough is named after it live farther downstream. You might see rats or snakes. Uh-oh, your boat is stuck. Time to get out and push and put on those waders. Don't touch the sawgrass. It is as sharp as a saw. It rots and forms the muck you're stuck in. Too bad you can't glide across the water like that water moccasin, which is highly poisonous. Lucky for you, the snake finds a frog for lunch. And finally, your boat breaks free. Now you can continue your tour. People have drained half the Everglades to build houses and farms. Animals like the apple snail have lost some of habitat. This affects the food chain. Birds, turtles, and alligators need the apple snail for food. Luckily, rainfall still feeds much of the wetlands. Clouds are rolling in right now. The Everglades are surrounded on three sides by water. That creates 55 inches, 140 centimeters of rain per year. And when it rains, the water, cries, the water rises. Head west to the Big Cypress Swamp. The tree overhead makes it dark and a little eerie. What's that sound? Quack, quack, quack. Oh, cute. It's a nest of alligators and they're hatching. Somebody else thinks they're cute too. Their mother. Alligators are good mamas. That's bad for you. Quick, paddle away. Head south toward the Gulf of Mexico. Here, the water mixes with the ocean and gets saltier. This is a saltwater swamp. You can see the roots of the mangrove tree that grow here. And if you're lucky, you'll see the American crocodile. Crocodiles prefer salt water to fresh water. They are more rare than alligators and very shy. The Everglades is the only place on earth where alligators and crocodiles coexist. The Everglades is a fragile ecosystem. If we don't care, don't take care of it, we'll lose it. Nobody wants that. Right, manatee? Whoa, a manatee. A rare sight indeed. Now you can go home and ace your report. The Everglades are awesome. The wetlands of the world. All right. So what do you think the main topic was of our story? And then what was the central idea? Hmm.